Uh, good afternoon. Today I'd like to show a new software tool developed by Artwork for mass designers who are creating redistribution masks for fan out or fan in wafer level packaging. To create your mask you have to know exactly where to put your circuit that redistributes the die. To do that you get some information from the foundry. Typically you'll get two pieces of information. The first is called a wafer shot map which you can see on the screen. That is derived from the stepper that uses a reticle and steps the reticle across the wafer. The information you get from the foundry is typically in the form of a screenshot and it tells you some things like the size of the chip, the uh, number of chips per reticle, the reticle offset, if there's any reserve distances on the bottom, and what the wafer diameter and margin is. So this is a very typical type of data you'll be transmitted. The second information that you'll get is very likely something we call a wafer map. That's going to be an ASCII file that uses symbols for the position of every die. In this example, the dot represents either no die or it represents a non-usable die. The ones represent your product devices. You'll see a couple of twos here. These represent some special die, probably a test device or an alignment device. The good thing about the wafer map is that it tells you exactly what is in place, even if there's been die that have been knocked out for one reason or another. You'll see that from this wafer map information. Uh, and if you know the size of the die, of course, you know how this array looks. What you don't know is how this array is placed onto the wafer. Fortunately, the shot map gives you that information. It doesn't give you a lot about the particulars. It's not easy to look at this picture and tell which die have been removed, but in this picture you can. So what our tool does is it, it combines the positional information from the shot map with the actual detailed information of each die from the wafer map and enables the user to overlay those two and determine what the proper shifting of this wafer map is to provide the template for your wafer level mask. So we've implemented this program as a plugin to our GDS2 viewer called Wafer Layout Generator. This has three sections. The first tab is used to read the wafer map text file and convert it into a GDS2 layout. The second section is used to enter the parameters of the shot map and generate a layout. And then the third tab combines these two layouts in an overlay so the user can see the offset. Once you know that offset and measure it, you can go back and reconvert the wafer map data into a layout that actually represents where the die are exactly positioned on the wafer. So we'll start by converting our wafer map into a layout. Here's our file, wafermap.txt. And the first thing it does is it scans the symbols. And since we want to usually go to a standard like SIMP, we have to make sure our symbols use valid SIMP standards. So for the no die position, we put two underscores. For the product die, we put zero, one. And for alignment die, we might put something like FF. So once we've made that mapping, we could create a valid SIMP file. Now we have to put in the units. This is 3.76. This is 3.74. We'll just say the flats on the bottom. And let's call this wafer map without shift. Okay, and we don't want to create any of these things because they'll interfere with the same diameter and margins from the shot map. So press convert. It's done. The magenta die are the non-existent ones or the partial ones. The blue ones marked 0, 1 are our product and you can see the ones marked FF are the two special die. So this would be very helpful to us except we still don't know exactly how this is placed on the wafer. Typically, if we automatically center this as we've done, that will not be the same position as it is on the wafer. There's usually some very small offset, but it's important to get it right. So now we'll go to the shot map. So we'll start by putting five die in X and six in Y. Put in the size of the die. Again, it's 3.76 and 3.74. The radical offset is 0.3 in X and minus 9.81 in Y. We'll call this one shot map. Diameter is 200, 3, and the flat on the bottom, the keep out area is 9. So we'll click generate. And let's have a look at this. Let's turn off the reticles. This gives us the exact position, but you'll notice that the die that have been knocked out have not been mentioned. There's no special dies here or here. So we're going to combine this with the wafer map data. So to do that, we go back to our plugin and we go to layout compare. Now here's our input map without shift from the wafer map. Here's our shot map. We'll call this compare and now we'll merge and view them. What I'm looking at are an array of die from the wafer map and from the shot map. 
And here we can see the offset. We could measure those two distances and we'll get the correct offset. So let's use the measure command here. I click here and click here. And it tells us that it's 0.3 and minus 0.460. So we're going to convert the wafer a second time using these offsets here and see how that lines up now. What I'm doing is I'm going back to convert wafer map. I'm calling this one with shift, and I put in a shift of 0.3 and minus 0.460. And now we're going to do our layout compare again. And this time, it's with shift against the shot map. And now when we zoom in, we see that the two are perfectly aligned. And if I turn on and off the die from the shot map, you can see where the ones that have been knocked out on the wafer map are appearing in the shot map. So this is my final positional layout. It's taken from the wafer map, but it has in fact been offset using the information we got in the shot map. You can use this as a template for any kind of mass that I want to make for this wafer. Thank you.